Hello and welcome to this video on how to disassemble, fix and reassemble your Razer Naga 2014, the one with the mechanical side keys, in order to fix the problem of the scroll wheel jumping all over the place when you use it. As if you scroll downwards and it'll jump, actually, actually jump upwards or it'll skip a bunch of pages going down or it's all over the place going up and down. So yeah, I had this problem, but luckily somebody on Tumblr figured this out a long time ago, well, probably about a year ago. So all I did was follow his instructions and absolutely void the warranty on the mouse. So if you ha have a warranty, you might want to fix that first. But anyway, I'm going to try that first. But anyway, you're going to need a small knife or exacto knife and a small screwdriver. As you can see, this small Swiss Army knife has both and they are the perfect size for this. So first step we're going to do, flip it over and you need to remove the track pads right here. Now over here on my first attempt, I already fixed this one, but I'm showing you how to do it. You need to make sure that when you dive in to lift the plastic that you go in deep enough to actually lift the uh, sticky stuff up beneath this black area. Otherwise, you end up with that and you leave the actual sticky stuff underneath. So, oh, hold on, there we go, much better. Dive deeply and if you can see the screwdriver and there is nothing above it on the hole, you've done it correctly. So, lift it a little bit. We are now done with this part. We're going to put this over here because we are going to use that to store the screws we are going to have lying around. We've removed the screws, all we gotta do now is starting from this area right here, which is your icon, to stick your fingernail in it and it'll come out on its own. As you can see, it's starting to come out. Make sure you do not rip it out because there is a cable that links this top part to the rest of it. There we go. And there is the cable I told you about. All you gotta do is pinch the white area. Do not pull it, pull it from the cables. You don't wanna do that. Pinch the white area between your two fingernails and pull. So yeah, grab it like this and pull it like this. Do not pull it from the cable. You'll completely rip it apart and completely ruin it. But anyway, we're not gonna need this for a while, so we're gonna set it aside. Now these side little areas come out on their own. All you gotta do is finagle them a little bit. You'll see that they're loose, or they feel loose because they are, and they come out on their own. This one has nothing on it, so no problem there. Now this one right here, we don't actually have to remove, but for clearness of image, we will remove it anyway. As I said, you gotta finagle with them a little bit. They're not particularly tough. I just don't, you wanna be careful not to break them. Oh, hold on, there we go, there we go. And there we go. So, I do not know if you can remove these small ones right there, but it, it, it really isn't much of a problem. We're going to ignore it for now, because the part we care about is right here. So anyway, the first thing we need to do is unscrew this. Now this right here, that is keeping the wheel in place, this is just, that is just the LEDs that light up the wheel. That, so it's really not that important. In fact, if you don't want your scroll wheel to be shiny, you could completely remove this, this little circuit board right here, and your scroll wheel will no longer shine. So the screw, we're going to leave the screw right there, put it to the side, and here we have the tricky part. First, we're going to remove the, it from there, the same way we did the other one, grab it from the white area, pull gently, and it comes out on its own. Now this part right here can be pretty tricky. What I did is I, I am using my fingers to pull on the plastic that the wheel is sitting on while using the other hand to pull to create some more space. There we go. You can, that did hurt a little bit, but so be careful with your fingernails. And the scroll wheel is now free. Now the part that we need to fix is right there. It's that little middle square. So all we gotta do is pop the scroll wheel out. Done. And this just pops off on its own because the wheel itself is hexagonal and it's got a hexagonal hole in it. But anyway, this little piece is the problem piece right here. Now the problem is that on this side, you can see right there holding your own version in your own hands. I'm not sure if I can focus it enough. There we go, you can barely see them. You can see the little dots of the copper that are inside this area. Now inside here, that little green thing, it, there is a scroll, a little wheel that also has copper on it. 
I'm going to link some of the images that the person on Tumblr who figured this out, I believe his name is Sionis, I think. No, not Tumblr, on Reddit. He did this first and he taught me how to do it through his post, so link, props to him. So anyway, in order to access the part on the inside that we actually need to fix, you're going to have to cut these little black dots here. Now, this is the only black dot that I left because I did not the entire thing to come our, uh, completely undone. So you're going to have to grab either your knife or X-Acto knife. And what I did is I started here, like this, and slowly sawed at them very slowly until they came off on their own, like pop. So once you've got three of those done, which is what I did and what I recommend, you're ready to lift this part up slightly. So there we go. You can see it. I'm not sure you can see it, but it's already lifting up. Now the little green wheel inside is slightly higher, so you will have to apply some pressure. There we go. <clears throat> there we go. So inside you can see the problem piece. The problem piece is that little metal D right there on the edge. So what that is doing is that is a type of spring that is putting pressure onto the green wheel with, so that the copper on the green wheel touches the copper on the other side of the square on the bottom. And that is what creates the signal for the scroll to go up or down. So the problem is that with enough use, the copper itself actually wears out so that it is not completely touching and it can it creates a small short circuit and that's why it jumps all over the place so what he did and what i did is you're going to depending on how you did this if you completely disassemble the piece all you got to do is grab it between your fingers and bend it a little bit more so what we want is to, we want the little metal d to apply a greater amount of pressure onto the wheel so that the copper touches perfectly and doesn't create a little short so what i did is i would grab it somehow like this and I would I shift my knife like this and then like that and twist it so forcing the plastic or no, the aluminum upwards create increasing the bump that is already there so that is what I did now one side is nice but I figured I might as well increase the one on this side since I'm already here so there we go I think that's pretty good compared to the other one Yep, that's pretty good. Okay, so once you've done that, I because we did it this way and this part's still here, all we got to do is slide this piece back over here, put a little pressure on the wheel so that it goes down, and because we only cut them off, the little picks are still there to keep, help keep this little metal square in place. Put a little pressure on it to make sure it goes back to how it's supposed to be. If you want, you can grab a super glue that comes with a brush and apply a very diminuscule amount onto a corner just like this like that's all you want to do all you want to do is hold it in place not actually glue anything together because if you apply too much you can actually glue the entire assembly together and then you completely screwed there's nothing you can do about it so so as you can see this little one here is breaking apart is popping up because i uh, because of the pressure and the bend i applied to the one on mine so however we don't have to worry about that too much actually yes we do so now that this is here so because of the amount of pressure i'm applying the springs applying to it it is popping out so good thing i've got my own little amount of crazy glue. here you are so brand new crazy glue unfortunately i did not find one with brush which is kind of bad and this is the only one I was able to find. Luckily, this crazy glue came with little this, a little pipette. So I am going to use that. So first, put it on its stand. There we go, finally opened. Okay, so remove the little opener and cap thing slowly without applying pressure to the bottle. Otherwise, it's going to get all over the place. It got all over the place anyway. I can did not get any on my fingers. Perfect. Okay, I can already smell it. Good. So apply the ply pit. There we go. So now that I've got this, now like I said, you don't actually want to do it an entire drop on it. So what I'm going to do is, let's see, here we go. I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply some to the carton, to the back of the carton that it came in. And then I'm going to pick some up with a little string area and then spread that. That's what I'm going to do. So I'll pick one up, pull it down. Put a little bit more, pick it up with a straw, put it there. There we go. That's nice. That's nice. Perfect. 
So now all we got to do is apply a little bit more pressure and wait until it dries up. And that should be done. And indeed it is enough. As you can see, it is no longer separating by itself. That, that minuscule amount of super glue was more than enough to keep it in place. So if you have a little brush that you can sacrifice to the gods of the super glue, I recommend you do that. So now that we're done, uh oh, don't fall on that. Okay, so now that that little odyssey is out of the way, time to rebuild it. Okay, so where is our piece? Here, here it is. So, and here is our other piece. So the way this goes is the little pointy end of the square goes like this at the bottom of this part right here, and the cables stick out on the end. There is no snapping into snapping it into it. It does wobble a little bit. That's normal. That's how it comes. So just put it back onto the mouse wheel, and then put the mouse wheel back into its little assembly here, making sure that goes in there. And yeah, it's done. And right already from here. You can already feel the, how much l harder it is to spin the wheel. However, it works, so that's the outside. If you want to make sure it works, it's working and it's just how you like it, all you got to do is plug it in and then go to something that you can actually scroll. Oh, whew, almost got super glue on me back there. And move it around like this and you'll see that it either it will or it will not no longer jump around the page. So once you have got it, once you got it to the tension you like, all you got to do is reassemble it. So what we're going to do is, just how we removed it, shove it into the front one first, and then with our hands, just like we removed it, pull it back, and there we go. And that is all that needed to be done. So just shove that back in there. There we go, nice and snug. So now it's back to reassembly. So first it's the LEDs. If you don't want the LEDs, you can just not reassemble this part. Pretty sure that's all it is. So, put it in there. Put it back into the hole. I should not be doing that with the knife out. Don't do that. Screw it back in. Make sure you're gentle with the screw. You don't want to put too much pressure. Otherwise, you will completely tilt the clicking motion in that direction because you're applying pressure there. And as we can hear, everything is working perfectly fine. So all we gotta do now is rebuild everything. So just like last time, these snap into their own slots basically. All you gotta do is finagle with them a little bit. There we go, this part goes this way, no, this way. So what you wanna do here, now that I've had a bit of practice, is you wanna remove the entire thing at once. So you can see the little pegs there and you can see the little holes there on the bottom. You want to make sure all the pegs and other holes slide in at the exact same time, and it'll slide in on its own. So, there we go. Wiggle a little bit, and it'll work. And then, after that, all we got to do is snap the little cable from our top back in, otherwise we're going to be missing two entire buttons, and that's not good. There we go. It's really that easy. And all we got to do is make sure we put this into its place, and everything should fall into its own. There we go. Falls into its own. And congratulations, you have rebuilt your Naga. All you gotta do now is screw everything back into place, which we shall do now. Now, be careful with this part right here. You do not want to add too much pressure onto the screws. Once your little screwdriver starts sliding uh, up and down on its own, you can see it right there. I can, you can feel it. Don't apply any more pressure. That is as far as the screw wants to go, so don't force it. You don't need the Nazaga to be airtight, and it's not anyway. So do the exact same thing for all four screws. There we go. And you are done. And with that, you have fixed your scroll wheel jumping problem on your Razer Naga 2014. Now, I am pretty sure this method will work for the for the older any other naga probably i don't see a razor switching out parts completely just between one motor and another but anyway all we gotta do now is slide these back into place how you do it is on your own just make sure they are not above their little hole I'll apply a little pressure to get the glue to adhere to the bottom of the mouse again 
it will never be perfect you have to live with that so put the rest in their area there we go and this one right here and we are done there we go that is how you fix your Razer Naga 2014 with its clicky screw with its crazy scroll wheel problems so anyway thank you for watching and hopefully you found this useful now the link to the reddit page for the guys Ionius that helped me figure this out is in the description go to if you have a reddit account give him a thumbs up over there or whatever it is that works over there or tell him that you used his guide with my help in the video form to fix your mouse because people do appreciate that and yeah i will see you next time for whatever happens hopefully not another mice problem because that would be unfortunate